With our first three videos about Bitwig Studio 2.0, a major theme was about the increased efficiency that this version brings to you. And if you make music every day or you mix music every day, it's improvements in efficiency. It's those speed up workflow things that make the biggest difference over a long period of time, right? Having more samples is great. Having more devices to plug in is great. But if you're not gonna use them that much, you know, how big is that update really? And so this is on a case by case basis. But in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can use the save as default preset to really speed things up. And this is especially true if you make music in a consistent style and you have the same sort of effects chains that you use time and time again, you're going to see how this save as default preset can really come through in a big way. So I'm going to start by loading up the polysynth. And what you're going to see right off the bat is that it actually has changed a little bit. And that's because I've used the save as default preset command to open up the filter. I don't like the filter closed down at the beginning. And so all I did was I opened that filter right up. I right clicked and I choose save as default preset. That's all you have to do. All right, in order to make that change, but it's bigger than just the device itself. It will include anything you put into the effects section, anything you put into the note effects section, and it also includes any modulators that you bring to the party. And so this is very significant because when we're looking at this instrument, it's changed a lot from version one, namely the fact that all of our modulators are gone. So if we want to know, or if we do know that we're going to be using an additional LFO, we need an additional envelope, we want those expression controls right out the bat, we can go ahead and set that up and save it as a default preset. One other thing I might want to do, and this is just so you can see it is I'm going to have this switch over to a saw. I'm going to bring this to the same octave and I'm going to slightly detune. All right, just from the start, that's a, a good starting place I like. I'll probably switch this back over just to oscillator one, but I know then when I'm going for that mix that they're going to be slightly detuned in the same wave shape right out the bat. Okay, so let's go in here. Let's bring in an additional LFO. Uh, I really don't care what LFO in this example. I'll just use the classic LFO. I'm going to go down to our second slot. I'm going to bring in an ADSR. And then our third slot, I'm going to bring in the expression controls. Okay, so now we have these three loaded up right at the start. All right, let's say that I also know that I always love to combine the polysynth with a particular chorus. All right, we'll say in this case, just the built-in Bitwig Studio chorus. And I want to start with that by default turned off. Now I could go even further and I could go and like create, you know, a remote control page for this so that if I want to, I could have like one button to, you know, turn that on and off, but I'm really not going to go that far here. So I'll leave this pretty much at where it is. That should be a good starting point for this when I turn it on. Uh, but by default, I'll have it turned off. And then the other thing is, let's say that there's a particular like reverb plugin that I like to use. All right, this is going to be true for both plugins and also for built in devices. So let's see if there's any settings on here that I'd want to change. Actually, this would be pretty good um, for a starting point, but I'm going to go ahead and turn that off right from the get go. One other thing I know I would want to bring on here are macro controls. I'd probably use a macro for, and that's just out of habit from what we had before with Bitwig Studio One. If you're brand new to the program, that may be of little use or concern to you. So now all we do, it couldn't be easier, save as default preset. I can close this down. I could open up a new project. I'm not going to bore you with that. And then I can just go in here and I can bring in the polysynth. What you're going to see is that by default, boom, it has everything that we just had saved for us like so. I can jump right in without ever having to worry about, at least in a normal case, needing to bring more things in because I know I'm going to want to start with an LFO. I know I'm going to want that additional a ADSR. I want to have those expression controls. I want the macros and I want that each and every time I load up the instrument. Just for the sake of example, it's worth showing you that this isn't just limited to Bitwig devices. This is also true for plugins that you have. Now, you know that you can save presets, you can, you know, put this into a group or put it into a chain, but you're not going to probably want to create a default like that. That would be a little bit risky and dangerous, right? Because that situation is going to change all the time. But let's say that you know that you want to couple this particular reverb with an EQ. All right, I could go in here, go into the um, plugin chain, or I should say, what do they call it here? Plugin post effects chain. And I could bring in like the EQ and in this case, let's bring in the 
Uh, I'd probably just need an EQ2 for this in most situations. And I'd probably have this one also turned off by default. But what I can at least do is set it up in the way that I'd probably want to set it up. The most typical thing that I end up doing with like EQs a lot of times is having some kind of high pass filter and then also having a shelf. All right. And I can leave it as it is here. That's probably good enough. It's a great starting point for me. And then I could go, I could right click and I could um, save this as the default preset. One other thing that's probably worth noting is that if I was to use like the EQ5, something that has a uh, dynamic display on it, it would make probably a lot of sense for me to go in here and turn off the spectrum analyzer from the start. Just because when you're EQing something like a reverb, that's very rarely going to be necessary. And again, what I'd probably do is turn off these bands, go in and put band five to be a high shelf. I might even bring this down to around like 5K. And again, this is going to be personal preference depending on what it is you do. And then switch this to be some kind of like a high pass filter. Turn it off from the start. Bing, bang, boom. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to save this as the default preset. Next time I go and bring this in, we'll see that it's already set up there for me, ready to go. Don't have to worry about bringing that on separately. So this is a big efficiency step up. And with the addition of the modulators, I think this becomes really important for instruments that you're using, whether those are third party plugins, because obviously those also have these modulation slots, or if they're built in devices, all it takes a right click save as default preset and it can be changed at any time you can just get rid of this for example i can right click here save as the default preset and we'll then see that when i bring it in for one final time that it has saved it in its default state without that additional effect on there all right something to take advantage of something that can definitely speed you up especially now with having to bring in modulators thanks for watching